at that point, that's where I was at. I was like, it's, that's that's not cool. Like, I want to know the truth. I want to understand. I want to know my background. I want to know what I'm up against. You know, like, I want to know all those things so that I can move forward in my adult life to be a better mother for my kids so that I can break generational curses for my kids so that I'm not repeating the same cycle over and over and over and over. But unfortunately, I had to go through what I went through so that I can get to the point that I'm at now Hey family, I am Paige and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Hey family, welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. My friend, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited about this conversation. <laughs> I'm excited too. And and, and it's, it's, it's a little bit different today because it's a conversation slash coaching session. So I'm even more um, excited about, about, our, about our conversation. So since we're doing a hybrid of you know, conversation slash coaching, I still wanted to start off with just talking about how we come to know each other. Is that cool okay. with you? Absolutely. So um, Paige and I met because she saw me um, on a panel for the Beauty Boot Camp Summit, you know, hosted by my girl, Ponch, uh, who's the founder of Ponch Cosmetics. Shout out to Ponch for putting on an awesome event. <laughs> Right, it was. It was so. Eventually connecting um, Paige and I. So for the beauty boot camp, because I know what you're thinking, Keisha, why were you on a summit for like a cosmetics line? Family, I was on there to talk about, you know, mental health and talk about self-awareness and loving yourself from the inside out, because it doesn't matter how much makeup you put on your face. If you are ugly on the inside, you are ugly on the outside. If you don't love yourself on the inside, it's going to show on the outside. So there's not enough makeup to cover that up. So we had the conversation. I had the conversation, you know, with Ponch on purpose and how purpose can add to our beauty as, as well. And Paige saw me on the summit. I believe you said that your, your mom heard the conversation first, mm -hmm. right? Yes, she did. Uh huh. And she said, you need to jump on there and you need to watch it. I'm like, okay, I'll go watch it. I went and watched it. I thought, I really thought it was like about lipstick and so, uh, or like stuff to do with punches, lines. So I'm like, okay, let me go look and check it out and see. And then okay. that's when I jumped on and seen your beautiful face. <laughs> oh, girl, don't. Don't blow because I will right. go away today. <laughs> right. I'm in good company with the beauty, okay? Right. So um, so yeah, so she saw me on the um on the summit, which you know, which is amazing. And Paige actually submitted a guest form to be, you know, a guest here on the podcast. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more about that in a second. But that's how we, you know, came to having this particular conversation. So Paige, let me ask you this. When you saw me, you know, and heard me on the summit, what stood out to you that sparked you to actually reach out? Um, I said, this woman is pure. That's what I said. That was the first thing that I said. I was like, oh my gosh, she is pure. I have to meet her. Like, I was like, I need to meet her. I had need to meet her. I had need to have a conversation with her. She is real. And like, not a lot of people come out and talk about mental health. So that was the first thing that rung and stood me up i'm on my phone like oh let me sit down let me watch this let me pay attention close attention to her let me hear the gems that she gonna drop because definitely listening to somebody that was just open about talking about trauma that was that just stood out to me and now that, that that's what attracted me to you to go even look at your instagram or take the next step to even look at your website so yeah um. <laughs> we just got started we just got started we just got started. Where did that come? Where are these tears coming from? I don't 
Oh, no. <laughs> we just got started. This is oh, dope. Goodness. You guys, mm-hmm. like, uh, let me take a moment. Let me take a moment. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, Nobody has ever described me as pure. You guys, mm-hmm. like, let me let me explain where these tears are coming from. Because if y'all know my story, right, I ran from my purpose for a long time. I did. I ran from it a long time. I don't know if you if you know this page because I'm not sure if I talked about this on a summit, but I ran from my purpose for a long time because I did not want to. First off, let me back up. I always knew that my purpose had something to do with me sharing my story of surviving sexual abuse, mm-hmm. and. I didn't want to be known as the girl who was sexually abused. Like, I didn't want to be known for that woman because that's where my story started. But I knew that wasn't how it was going to end because I, 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 I had to know. I was just like, oh my God, there has to be more for me. And so I, you know, chased the dream of becoming an attorney for so many years because I did not want to continue to you know, talk about how I was sexually abused, right? And even though I was running from it, you guys, it was still coming up because it would be people, women at my job, it would be friends where I'm just like sharing my story with them as a way to uplift them and to motivate them and to encourage them to go after whatever goal we were talking about at the time because I'm like, yo, if I can grow up in the projects, be sexually abused for eight years and my mama know about it like i'm the first person in my family to graduate from college like if i can do all of that like you can do x y and z you know but even though that i was operating in purpose i didn't see it as that because my goal was to be an attorney so when i come across women like Paige, who's like man you know it, it just it just, it just warms my heart, you know, because I'm just thinking about like, man, what if I never would have said yes? We have to say yes to operating our purpose every single day because purpose is not just for you as the individual. It's for the millions of people that you're going to touch. Mm. And I'm just fortunate enough to be in a position where I'm able to meet some of those women. And when I come across, it just, uh, it, it just... It just, it just gets me because, you know, one of my values of my company page is transparency, you know, because I'm like, nobody talks about the ugly part of trauma mm-hmm. on the healing side, you know, like yeah. we, we, we talk about like, yes, I went through this and now all of a sudden it's like, ta-da! I'm this wonderful person, but what about yeah. that in-between? It's yeah. not a conversation about the in-between. And so... What do you do in-between? Yeah. hmm What do you do in-between? Yeah. You know, talk about the fact that healing doesn't happen overnight. It took years. It took years. You know, it took years. And even now... You know, some of the trauma is is showing up in in different areas of my life. That's why I'm in therapy now. You know, but anyway, I don't want to get off on a I don't want to get off on a on a tangent. But yeah. that's where the, that's that's where the tears come from, you guys. That's just tears of happiness and 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 joy. You know, uh, I'm gonna you know put it out there. I'm, I'm gonna speak it into existence that AST is gonna become a million multi million dollar multi billion dollar enterprise. But you guys, if I never hit a million dollars, I am happy and fulfilled. Just based off that one sentence that Paige just said, I am happy and fulfilled. Like AST has done its job. If Paige is the last woman I coach, AST has done its job 100%. And I, I just, I'm just fulfilled and I have happiness in that because so many people are not even choosing their purpose. And they're living unhappy lives. So the fact that, yeah. So I don't. That was me. Yeah. So I don't take this opportunity for granted. So anyway, I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, family. I just want to take a second to tell you how I can help you build a strategy to create the life that you journal about. So every day is a vacay. Because like you, I had grand plans at the top of the year, and then COVID hit. So my plans had to pivot, not 
pause. And guess what? It's the same for you. In my Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision, I teach you how to get back on track so you can end 2020 with purpose. Now, only you can determine if you're ready to do the work. And if you're ready, then I'm ready. And guess what? Class is open right now. All you have to do is visit strategizeyourvision.com to enroll today. Now, back to the conversation. <laughs> Let's get back to the schedule. You know, the schedule program. Right, right, right. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But um, but yeah, um, Ponch listened to a couple of my episodes. Ponch and I, you know, we met uh, like three or four years ago. Like I met Ponch right at the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey i met her and so you know she's seen me transition um and just grow over the years and she was listening to my podcast and, and she heard you know a few episodes and wanted to bring me on you know because she didn't want the the boot camp to really necessarily be about makeup right she wanted to talk about that inner beauty so i was you know just honored that she even asked me to to be on on the summit but um, on your form that you completed, right? Because you guys, she completed, Paige completed a, a guest form to, you know, to be here on, on the podcast. And so I'm going through her form because at this point I didn't know that she had, you know, seen me on, on the summit. I just thought this was just a woman who had came across the podcast, you know, you know, put in, you know, the guest form. So I'm reading through her form and something on her form stood out to me because Paige wrote in on in one of the for one of the questions, but I'm still missing something. I just want to find myself and live in my truth. And so when I read that, my spider senses kicked in. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, you know, because I had read through her form and you know, she said so a little bit about her, you know, her um her testimony. And I'm like, yeah, I would love to have a conversation with her on the podcast for sure. I was like, but should I extend some services to her? Because she says that she wants to, you know, live in her truth. And I'm like, I don't even know like which way to like go with it. So I was just like, you know what, let me just ask Paige. Reach out to Paige, see if she will be willing to just hop on a quick phone call, you know, and she said yes. And so here we are, you know, because I presented the the idea to her to have like, you know, a conversation slash, you know, coaching session. And she was like totally down with that. And so I was super excited about that. Now, you know, there are so many women who share Paige's testimony. You guys, Paige's testimony is just so amazing, so awesome, because Paige is a small business owner, and she also, you know, a mother of three, and she has already come so far to get to where she is right now, right? And I know there are so many people, women in particular around the world, who can relate to Paige, but, you know, I do want to hold in on daddy issues, growing up with daddy issues, because it's not a conversation that we've had yet, on the podcast. This will be the first time we talk about it here on, on the podcast. And I think it's something that's relevant, you know, especially, you know, the fact that we're living in a world where Black fathers are being taken every single day, you know, that could be somebody's daddy issue, if you will. And so I really wanted to just like tap into that. So Paige, if you don't mind, can you tell us a little bit more? Absolutely. Um... For as long as I can remember, I have always felt a sense of possibly abandonment, um, just missing something, like never really understanding at all, like what was going on, just knew that it wasn't right. You know, here I am growing up with a wonderful mother who was taking care of me, um, never really understanding what it means to have a daddy in my life at all because I didn't, I mean, it wasn't my norm. It wasn't, I wake up every single solitary day and I have my mom and my dad to talk to, you know, so um, just off the back, not, not saying I didn't have people around me because I had a lot of people around me, but just saying that, that there was always 
an abandonment issue with me and I never really dealt with it because I'm just like, okay, it's cool. I'm normal. I'm, I'm, I'm coping. I'm getting up. I'm going, I'm going. It's my life and not really addressing it or not even knowing how to understand what it meant because I didn't know. I never had a conversation with anybody about, oh, you don't have your daddy in your life. So that's why you feel that way. So it was just like, it was normal. Yeah. Normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and even with, you know, some type of male figure in the household, you know, you can still experience, you know, the abandonment issues that Paige talked about as well, because my mom had a husband. And, you know, her husband is the only resemblance of a father that I knew, right? And so, obviously, I had some daddy issues, too, uh, that I needed to to overcome. So, you can, so just FYI, and that's because my biological father just wasn't around when I was growing up. So, you can still have daddy issues, even if there's a male figure in the household. So, if, if that's, you know, your case please don't think this conversation is not for you because mm-hmm. it's, it's for you. It is. Your dad could be right there and you still could suffer with some of the issues that I suffer with because there's many to come with it, you know, mm-hmm. not just one. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So how has your daddy issues shown up in your adult life? Um, being anxious a lot about, um, about, being in a relationship with different men, just anxious about what's going to happen while I'm in the relationship with them. Um, are they secure? Are they going to stay here? You know, or are they going to stay with me? Um, and it brought up a lot of insecurities in my past as far as me even being enough for the relationship. Mm. And I want to say that um, it just, when I, when I had my daughter, you know, I wasn't, I don't feel like I was at a state to where I was like, okay, um, my daughter, you know, my daughter is seeing me. So she needs to see that there is a, a man and a woman in a relationship. If that makes sense. It does make sense because you want your, your child to your daughter in particular, because you mentioned daughter. So for you, of course, all your kids, but for you in particular, your daughter, it was important for you to have your daughter see a man and a woman relationship because that's that's not what you experience. Right. And I felt like it was right. Even though some people that have a man and a woman in their house, they, you know, they still have issues. But I felt like it because I hadn't dealt with those abandonment issues that I was dealing with for the years before because I hadn't dealt with it. I hadn't went to therapy yet. I hadn't had a conversation with anybody about some of the things that I was feeling because I was simply living, living in the fact that this is okay. I felt like it was okay. You know, like mm-hmm. I felt like it was okay that I felt this way. So I didn't really know. I didn't have any, um, I wasn't really um, educated, I guess you say, on on the fact that I had feelings that needed to be talked about. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know about therapy or anything like that. So how did you come to know about therapy? Um... The, okay, so one of the things that happened to me is I was in a very long-term relationship and um, I tried to commit suicide. So, yeah, so I had all these insecurities, um, upset, mad at myself, mad at my situation. Well, why am I not good enough? Why is this not good enough? What needs to be done? So, um, I was taken away from my kids for seven days. And once I was taken care taken away from my kids seven days, it, it triggered something like, no, Paige, this is not right. Like you, your kids are missing you. You know, what, what would they do? You know, what are they doing now without you? So then I was introduced to a program, which is a PHP program, um, at a hospital and I was introduced to that. And so I went through the whole, um, coping skills, which I was living up until a year ago without any coping skills. So I'm thankful and grateful for being able to be introduced to that program because now I know how to cope with life or cope with my feelings or know that my feelings that I'm feeling are okay. And they, they are valid feelings, you know, considering the things that I went through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Um, so I went to, end up going to therapy um and by me just going in there and having one conversation with her I mean when I walked out the door I instantly felt 
better. So I was like, oh, this is something that I, I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to implement this into my schedule in order for me to not get to that point that I was at to where I wanted to take my own life. And so I didn't want to exist anymore, you know? Ooh, man. You know, maybe God has put in you to create some type of program like the PHP that would help other women like, like Paige, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's super important for us to say yes to purpose every single day, every single day. Mm -hmm. But Paige, you also, you know, in our previous conversation, you talked about how, um, you know, and if you don't want to talk about it, let me know, but you, you brought up the fact that the man that you saw was your father. Mm -hmm. Um, you found out. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I want to say about, what's this, 2020, um, my son is five, so about two to three years ago, um, someone, well, he's always been absent even if he was my biological father or not, because now he, you know, I found out that he was not my biological father, but I've always had that feeling like, you know, he has a family. Why am I not good enough? Like, what is it? What is it that is causing him not to, and I was, I want to say I was 20, because I'm 29 now, so four years ago, I found out. So why is it that he's not in my life? What, what am I doing wrong that, that is causing him to want to stay away from me? not really knowing that page these issues have nothing to do with you this is this is this is stemming from a lot so at this age i've already had my um my second child my son case and i had him i hadn't even had my daughter yet because i have a two-year-old as well um and i'm like okay let me reach out to him because i do want him to be a part of my life and i'm ready now i'm ready i don't i don't have any anger built up i'm ready so i reached out to him and when I reached out to him, he said, okay, let's, Paige, to be honest, you're old enough now, let's take a DNA test. And I'm like, so okay. Because he, he, so he said, let's yeah, take he's DNA. always, he's always asked for a DNA test because I was so into the world and, you know, out and about and, you know, not really stable, you know, um, I didn't pay attention to the fact that he was clearly saying, okay, Paige, because I was mad and I was like, okay, he's not in my life. What am I doing wrong? So at that point in my life, I was angry about him not being there. So I wasn't able to accept the things that he was, I wasn't looking deeper into the conversations that we used to have about, okay, maybe why, what's his doubts? You know, not really understanding his part either. So it wasn't oh, until... So how, huh? did it, so how did it so how did it make you feel when he said let's take a DNA test? You old enough now, but we can yeah. go and have this done. How did that make you feel? Because you was reaching uh, out to you just had a baby and you want him to be in your baby's life. Mm -hmm. Um it made that. it made it put I felt like it put a damper on my growth because and at that time I didn't have I wasn't seeking therapy because I didn't feel like I needed it. So it just put a halt in my growth. And I mean, all around growth. I mean, as me being a better mother to my daughter, because I had my daughter when I was 17. So at this time, I'm 22, 23. And I'm just still angry, still mad. Like, why aren't you there? What, what's up? Why, why aren't you there? I'm still mad. So I'm not really, I'm not really understanding what the excuse kit what the excuse is so i felt not good enough abandoned still um just I, it wasn't a good feeling i know that for sure absolutely so what happened once you guys took the dna test once we took the DNA test and the results came back um i felt another cloud come over me because what were the results he wasn't my father mm. He was not my father. So then instantly, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm okay, but still not, not, not being okay. So then another cloud came over me. Another set of issues came over me. You know? What, what was those issues? I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into my fam into my family, into what happened. Um, you know, how was I conceived? Who's lying? Why y'all been lying to me for so long? Like, be truthful. Mm -hmm. What's up? You know, because just by that one lie, I'm not blaming anybody for any decisions that I've made. I'm not blaming anybody for um, any of my experience or any actions that I've made. But I'm saying just being truthful and coming out 
and saying, oh, if there's a possibility that, you know, you know, that this man is not your father, that's why he possibly is not in your life, then maybe I felt like maybe it would have been a different story, but it's not. So, I mean, I guess I just, I, it was, at that point, it was hard. So then it was reaching out and looking for other, looking to fill the void, if that makes sense. To fill the void, digging deeper. Okay, who is my daddy? Let me go do my research. Let me see what's going on. You know, what is, you know, what is it? You know, so I was, st I started to search and it wasn't until the situation played out and I went to therapy, that I'm fast forwarding. When I went to therapy, and it wasn't until I was like, okay, it's above you now, Paige. Like, you have to take care of you first. You got to get to know yourself better. You got to get to understand why you feel how you feel. You need to seek help from somebody that's not your family. You need to talk to somebody else that's willing to talk to you and teach you the things that you need to, that you need to be taught. Because now this is your life. This is what was handed to you. So you need to learn how to live in your purpose, you know? Mm -hmm. So did I be off? Or did I answer the question? Right? No, you, okay. it, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, you know, these are your feelings. So there's no right or wrong way to, to answer the questions. Absolutely. Now, you guys, in my Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision, we have five weekly group coaching sessions, right? And during those sessions, you know, triggers are often, you know, discovered. And what Paige just, you know, described are her, are her triggers, right? The abandonment, the not feeling, you know, the not feeling like she's enough, especially when it comes to relationships, the insecurities that she had, you know, that especially came up with uh, relationships and dictated, you know, the types of relationships that she got involved in, um, you know, that and ended up leading her to, you know, trying to commit suicide. You was going to say something? Not only was, I just want to make, to make, make it clear. Not only was it with like intimate, like my spouse who I was with was with everybody. I felt that I, yeah, when I say everybody, I mean like friends, um, family, like it was with everybody. I felt that because I did, I just felt, especially when I got the DNA test and I found out that he was not my dad, it made me look at things a lot different and people a lot different that are closer to me because it's like, okay, I'm living it's not fair for me to have lived like that you know like mm -hmm. at that point that's where I was at I was like it's, that's that's not cool like I want to know the truth I want to understand I want to know my background I want to know what I'm up against you know like I want to know all those things so that I can move forward in my adult life to be a better mother for my kids so that I can break generational curses for my kids so that I'm not repeating the same cycle over and over and over and over but unfortunately I had to go through what I went through so that I can get to the point that I'm at now so that I can break those chains for my children because it was a, it was a rough, it was rough for me. You know, mm -hmm. it was rough for me with relationships with people, not trusting people, you know, feeling like they were only in it for some reason, not just not having, not, not feeling secure within people in general. Like I'm a people's person, but I've never felt, secure with a I'm, lot of people. I'm so glad you brought that up. Brought that up. Thank you for for clarifying that because you know even with inside the course we talk about team building. I, I you know I, I teach you how to build a support team because it mm -hmm. just doesn't you know affect your romantic relationships. It affects all relationships and it can also you know affect the mother daughter relationship that Paige has and the and not just with her mother, but with her daughter. And then the mother to son relationship, you know, this is why it's so important to build your, your support team. It doesn't always have to be, you know, family. Right? So I'm glad that you, I'm glad that you, you know, that you brought that up and, you know, and, and clarify that, you know, with relationships, because it's not just romantic relationships, it's all mm -hmm. relationships, you know? And so knowing and acknowledging these types of triggers, you know, helps you to know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. like self, self, it gives you self-awareness on your relationships with people in general. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, Paige, you might be thinking that, but that's not really what's happening. You know what I mean? Just because you have that insecurity in yourself, is that's not what's going on, Paige. So 
therapy helped me to be like, okay, Paige, let's understand, you know, let's have gratitude for one, for the people that are around you. For two, let's cope with these feelings that you're feeling. Let's see what you can do when you get those anxious feelings or that abandonment feeling. Okay, do something that makes you happy, Paige. Do something that takes you outside of those negative thoughts that you're thinking. So that that has helped me with relationships with people that are close to me as well um, and having boundaries with people too Because it, because if I become uncomfortable around people, I know how to take a step back or I know how to not bring up certain conversations around people people um if i want to bring up a conversation with somebody about my issues that i have had or i'm looking into you know trying to figure some stuff out because at the time when i was trying to figure out you know who my real daddy is you know i did a lot of asking family members so mm -hmm. that also taught me to okay Paige, you got to have certain boundaries people because some people are not open to talk about it that B word, boundaries. That's mm -hmm. something that we all need to, you know, implement and exercise is boundaries. And it's hard to set those boundaries and to live up to those boundaries when it comes to family, right? Because this is your family. We only get one set of family, you know, so it, it becomes difficult. But even with family, we have to, you know, we have to set those, those boundaries and abide by them. And, you know, also too, you know, with the right tools that we can overcome, you know, these the different hurdles in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Every time that we experience, you know, the, the certain triggers uh, mm -hmm. that, that tends to put us in this emotional tailspin or, or cause the, the inner chaos. And one mm -hmm. of the exercises or, or a tool that I love to do with my clients is to create if-then statements, okay? If-then statements. So I'm going to take a moment to share my screen. Because we're going to do this um, exercise together um, with with Paige, because one of the, the, the triggers that Paige, you know, said over and over again was not feeling like she's enough. Right. Not feeling like she was, uh, you know, enough to, to feel love and to feel secure in who she is and also in the different relationships, you guys. So so let's let's. Let's do that. Let's let's make the not being enough um, the if statement because the way that the if then works, right? This is a way to repurpose how we feel in certain situations, right? Because when these triggers happen, it's going to cause some type of emotional um, response, right? We may feel hurt, we may feel sad, we may feel angry, you know. But how we feel, you know when that situation happens is what we can actually dictate, is what we can repurpose, is what we can change and use it for, for our good, right? So we can continue to operate in purpose. Because let me tell you something, let me tell you what's not gonna happen. Life is not gonna stop. You're not mm -hmm. gonna stop, you know, uh, running into roadblocks and hurdles. People are not gonna stop hurting your feelings. Like the more you grow and the further you get down your path of purpose, like the, the bigger it may come the bigger the impact it may have on your life, right? So knowing the, the, the triggers and redefining, you know, how you feel about the particular situation will help you to, to overcome that hurdle. So I want to do the if statement. So Paige, if I fill in the blank, if I what, if you feel what when it comes to not being enough? If I feel down on myself, then I will, okay, wait, let's go back, okay, if I feel down on myself, and I feel ugly for that day, uh-huh, then I will mm -hmm. write affirmations, positive affirmations, and do something that makes me feel better or that I can afford. If I forget the I can afford part, because you don't want to go go out and get your nails done or your toes done and you don't have money to pay your bills. You definitely don't want to do that. So. Right. And so for me, writing affirmations down and speak, even on days when I don't feel like it, I like it, I like it. Even when days I don't feel like it and I feel down on myself, I have to make myself speak 
affirmations over myself in my life because negative thoughts take over page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have to write that down all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you're in the moment of, you know, feeling down or, or feeling ugly, if you will, instead of, you know, feeling not enough, you know, you can choose to feel triumphant. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you have overcome so much to get to that point where that trigger is coming up. Right. Like, what did you have to go through and overcome, you know, to, to get to that point that would even cause that trigger to come back up? Because, you know, self-doubt is something that we all go through. Even I still, you know, experience self-doubt. But it's how you feel in that moment mm -hmm. is what you can change and is, and is what you can you can control. So writing a positive affirmations is, is a great way of, of doing just that because you literally rewriting what it is that you're saying to yourself in your mind. Now, in what type of situation would this come up where you're feeling down on yourself or you're feeling ugly for the day? Is it because uh, somebody has said something or possibly say something to you? Or definitely, definitely. If someone says something to me, um, or I see something um, that triggers me to feel this way, like, let me see an example. Um, well, you, well, you still in the same place, you know what I mean? Or you haven't, you haven't changed anything. You're still doing the same thing you was doing two years ago. Are you still doing the same things you was doing a year ago? So that's when all that self-doubt comes in for me. And so when I'll that be, happens, I want you to focus on, first off, just write off whatever it is that person's saying. And then I want you to focus on your progress up to that point. Because mm -hmm. what people don't, don't realize is that when you are, when, once you make the decision to operate in your purpose, it takes a lot of inner work that needs to be done. And this is something that you haven't, you haven't got to it yet, but I talk about this, you know, in, in, in the class, strategize revision as well, but it's the inner work. This is what's, what's going on in the inside. That's you going to therapy, right? That's you getting the help that you need. That's you building your, your support team that's outside of your family, right? Mm -hmm. When you're doing the inner work, people are not going to be able to see what's going on because it's the inner work that you're, that you're doing. So it hasn't necessarily, you know, came to, to the surface, right? But that's because you're still, you know, you're still uh, uh, in progress, right? So you cannot allow people to take away the, the validity of what it is that you're doing because it's not for them to see yet in that moment. So if somebody comes to you and say, oh, you're still in the same place that you was in, you know, a year ago, dismiss that. And then just focus on the progress, right? And then focus on what your purpose is because you know what it is that God has placed on, you know, placed on you and you have already embraced it, right? So you just have to just focus on, on that and also know and, and realize that when people make those type of, of comments, it has nothing to do with you. It's a reflection mm -hmm. of how they feel about themselves. And so what they do, they project it on other people. Because unfortunately, some people get off on making somebody else feel bad because that makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. So you continue to do the inner work, right? Continue to do what it is that, that you need to do. So when you show up, you showing up as your authentic self. Because that's what's going to, you know, draw those people to you. The women that you want to help. And we're going to get to your purpose in a second. But that's what's going to draw them to you. Okay. You got to do the inner work. So when people come at you like that, just focus on your progress. And I don't care if it's, you know, small, medium size, or, you know, a large, you know, progress, you know, if you will, for lack of a better phrase. Progress is progress is progress. I don't right. care how small it is. If you even, right. even if you took a, a a half a step, that's one half step more than what somebody else has taken. Right, right. So let's do a let's do an if that statement as it relates to you being anxious, because right. in a previous conversation too, you also talked about you know anxiety. Anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, comes up. And correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're feeling anxious and anxiety, do the suicidal thoughts come up? Um, have they come up in the past? In the past, yes. In the okay. past, they have. Um, so, yeah, I mean, would I say um, if I'm feeling a lot of 
from feeling defeated, possibly, mm -hmm. um, about where I'm at. Where you are when it comes to what? Um, about where I'm at when it comes to me being in cer certain environments. Now, what do you mean by certain environments? If I'm over, um, if I'm over a friend's house and they have a lot of things going on that I don't agree with, um, I get anxious about that. Like what? Has this happened um, recently? Oh no, not recently. But okay. I know, like now, I know how to remove myself from certain situations. If there's a lot of chaos, if there's drama, um, I notice that I get really anxious about uncomfortable situations. So if I am out all night and my kids are not not you know not in bed by a certain time, that makes makes me very anxious. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Got you. Now I understand. Did I understand that correctly correctly? Environment mm -hmm. is that chaotic and not aligned with your priorities. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you feel it like that, you're going to do what? Take myself completely out of that situation. By leaving, right? By leaving or even voicing my opinion. Because sometimes, you know, we get um, where we could be. It could be at your house and your family comes over and, you know, they're a little bit loud and whatever the case may be. I'm not saying, I'm not using this as an example for something that has happened, but I'm just saying like, those that is something that has ha has happened in the past that has bothered me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The fact that you just haven't like spoke up for yourself, right? And and you know, and see, and that's a trigger. That's 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 a trigger too because there's power in our in our voice, right? And so, based off the the trauma that we've experienced, you know, in the past, it can cause a lot of us to just be silent. Or even for me, when I'm anxious, I get upset really fast. You know, the anger I was talking about earlier, um, sometimes the anger comes out versus me just voicing my opinion the right way. So it's like, okay, then that becomes a chaotic situation that I'm then like, oh, I'm self, I'm self sabotaging myself. Like, okay, Paige, you could have did, you could have went about telling this situation or getting yourself out of this situation in a different way. Or I'm saying no to people too. Ooh, yes. That's I mean, <laughs> that's a word all in itself. Saying no, because no is no is a complete sentence. And I'm and I'm glad that you have, you know, the 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 confidence or the courage to like speak up for yourself, right? Because that mm -hmm. also teaches people how to treat you and how to respect you, right? Because there's yeah. a, you, you can say things to people. It's not about, you know, necessarily what you say. It's about how you say it, right? Mm -hmm. so if and that took a them, while for me to learn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, people, it's, it's how you come at people when you say it, right? Because you can say it in a respectable, in a respectable tone and people, you know, listen better as opposed to you coming at them, you know, crazy and chaotic and in that angry mode because all they're going to do is meet you with anger right mm -hmm. now you or can come at them used to, away Say or because they're used to or because they're used to how i used to be you know obnoxious uh -huh. loud a little bit you know and so it's like okay we hearing this from you we, we don't believe it or we don't we don't take it serious you know yeah, and with that being said, you're not obligated to prove your growth to anybody. So what mm -hmm. that tells me is that you are possibly have outgrown those particular people and no longer need to even put yourself in those type of environments or around those particular people. And that's including family. Mm -hmm. That's including family. I know it's hard to cut those strings and cut those ties, you know, with family, but you can distance yourself and put distance, you know, between you and a family member that's not willing to accept your growth because mm -hmm. people like you when you, certain people, broken people like it when you're broken too. Mm. They love you in that broken state. So if they want to, if they want to keep you in that broken state, then you need to cut the ties. Like mm -hmm. why even, why even deal with that? Because guess what? Paige, you know, has this business that she's growing into a billion dollar business. She has women that she needs to, to help and speak on, you know, mental, mental health and mental illness, right? You got things you need to do. 
God yeah. is giving you some assignments. So mm-hmm. if this person cannot accept your personal growth, then it's time to cut the ties. Because who mm-hmm. are they to tell you that what well, that's not how you was? I don't care if it was two seconds ago. Don't allow anybody to keep you, you know, what in the in the state that you used to be in when you have grown outside of that. Mm-hmm. Not a, not an option, right? Yeah. And, right. And we haven't gotten to it yet, but in the in the class, trying to your vision, we're gonna mm-hmm. talk about um, building a support team, building a support right. team that's gonna support your self awareness journey because mm-hmm. that's what that's what it's all about. So you guys, I've talked about you know pages purpose right because Paige actually knows her purpose she well we all know our purpose but Paige has already embraced you know her purpose and her purpose is to help women not be afraid to speak about mental health and to utilize you know resources to get the help that they need right so right. Paige, how long did it take you to embrace your purpose um, to actually embrace, I felt like I've always known what I wanted to do, but I really didn't quite understand. Um, but it took about eight months for me to actually say, okay, Paige, it's time for you to put your foot down and stand up for what you know, because you've experienced this, you know that it works, you know what you need to do, you know how you need to help people, you just need to be consistent and do it. And so I would say eight months total. Okay. And so, you know, it was eight months for Paige. You guys, y'all know it took me 10 years to, to do it. So it's, it's, it's different for different people, right? But was there anything in particular that happened that made you say, okay, I'm, I'm, I need to go ahead and embrace my purpose? Was there anything in particular that happened? Um, I would say just me um, going through what I went through, going through the class, going through the program, completing the program successfully, taking therapy, um, seeing a change in my overall health, that was enough for me. That was motivation for me right there. Um, That was motivation. Because I've always knew it, knew knew it. (laughs) I've always knew, but to actually go through it is a different story because I have a lot of people who were around me who Mm -hmm. experienced some of the similar things that I did, but it wasn't until I actually went through those situations that I said, okay, Paige, this is, God is giving you a sign. Like you have to help other people. You Mm -hmm. have to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so glad that you, that you say that it was therapy, just going through the therapy and getting the help that you need because, you guys, this is why I say ask for help, whatever that looks like for you. Now, of course, I'm a a huge advocate of therapy because therapy is what helped me to heal from the sexual trauma, and therapy is something that, you know, I, I do right now to this day, you know, but the point is, is that she sought out help, and once she received the help, she was able to, you know, knock down those 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 walls that she had up she was able to knock down those safety nets that was preventing her from actually embracing her purpose i've always had help around me um i've always had people to talk to but i was never it was okay so let me just it was never me being honest with myself and with my real feelings and how I really feel. It was based upon my environment, the people that I'm around, my family, how I wanted them to see me or view me as. So it wasn't until I really just put, I was at my lowest point and it was like, okay, it's either you get help and you get understanding and you understand clearly what's going on with you mentally, physically, all the above, like, or it's either you're going to start over again and you're going to continue repeating the same cycle. So I always said I want to break generational curses. I've always said I want to do um, good things. I've never really just sat down and been like, okay, Paige, let's fix yourself first so that you can help other people because I thought I was fixed already. Oh, that is so good. I'm so glad that you clarified that. Thank you so much because mm-hmm. there are some people out there right now who are asking help to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. Right, and they need to you know ask for help from people that's outside of their environment if that's Mm -hmm. you then that's okay keep asking like speak up because you know because even with me with the sexual trauma you know it was a it was a family secret Mm -hmm. certain people knew 
because I was telling them, but it wasn't until I asked for help outside of the family that something was actually done. And I'm not, you know, throwing stones at family members and, you know, I'm not blaming any one particular person. That's just how my journey had to unfold. Mm -hmm. You know, so just, you got to just continue to, to, uh, to ask for, to ask for help. So let's break down how your purpose, you know, aligns with every area of your, of your life and break down why strategy is important. Because, um, in my master life class, strategize your vision, I teach you how to create a rock solid strategy for manifesting the vision that you have for your life. And so I want to do a, a visual of what that looks like. So Paige, you're going to have to tell me. Can you see it? See my board? Uh, yeah, I can see it, but not really. Is that better? Uh, okay, yeah. Is that better? Yes, that's it. Okay. Okay, awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, so... Purpose. Paige's purpose is to help women not be afraid to speak about mental health and utilize resources. Now, you guys, when it comes to, you know, putting together a strategy, but strategies is the term that I use. So I'm going to use the term that you guys are used to, setting goals, okay? Because mm -hmm. a lot of us are setting goals, New Year's resolutions, intentions at the top of the year, and we're not taking purpose, you know, into consideration. Number one, because we haven't embraced our purpose yet, right? And I understand why. Because purpose sets you apart from everybody else, right? Purpose is supposed to set you apart because what your purpose is is your purpose, right? There's something that you have to fulfill. You have to, you know, complete the calling that God has put in your life. But because of trauma, a lot of us are, you know, are, are wanting to feel loved, validated. We want to feel like we're enough, right? So we do things, you know, according to what our environment says is okay, right? Because we want that love in return. And, and purpose makes us look a little crazy in front of people. Mm -hmm. Especially the people who are who 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 are dealing with their own trauma, they can't even accept their own purpose, let alone yours, right? So we we tend to live a perception-driven life, which is something Paige has already learned. We tend to live a perception-driven life as opposed to a purpose-driven life. So everything starts with purpose. So if you find yourself setting these goals at the top of the year and you're not achieving them, or you're achieving them and you still Wondering, you know, what's missing? What's yes, missing? <laughs> absolutely. It's because you're out of alignment. Because it all starts with, it all starts with purpose, right? And once you have embraced your purpose, the vision that you, you know, should have, should be, you know, should come from your purpose. So your vision, right, is your purpose in action. Your vision is your purpose in action. And your vision is something that everybody can see, right? Because when you're operating in purpose, people can see what it is that you're doing. Like me, I'm operating in purpose. AST, you know, Assistance Truth LLC is not my purpose. It's the vehicle that I'm using to operate in my purpose. Me coaching Paige and helping her, you know, to help her on her self-awareness journey, right? To create a strategy so she can, you know, live out her purpose. That's my purpose. By sharing my story of how I survived sexual abuse and how she can, you know, overcome her daddy issues. That's my purpose. I'm just using AST as a vision. Y'all get that? And so once you have, you know, your, your, your purpose, and once your purpose turns into action, it becomes your, your vision. Now we have to make sure that your purpose is in alignment with every area of your life, right? So areas of life, your home environment, which is something that Paige talked about today. Finances. That's a huge area for a lot of us, especially right now as we're living in this, in this pandemic, right? And then relationships, both personal and platonic, right? Your purpose needs to align with every area of your life. And it's like six other areas that your purpose needs to align with. It's when your purpose 
you know, it's in alignment with each area of, of your life, this is where the fulfillment comes in. When purpose is in alignment with every area of your life, you don't feel like, you know, a private failure, but look like a public success to everybody. How many people we know? How many celebrities have committed suicide? Everybody looking like, but she has all this money, all this wealth, this huge company. And then one day she takes her life because she felt like a private failure. I'm just, you know, guesstimating. She felt like a private failure, right? Because something was out of alignment with purpose. So once you have purpose, turn it into your vision, talk to figure out how to align it with each area of your life. Now comes the strategy. Now comes the strategy, people. This is where, you know, you start to set the goals, right? That you need to, you know, put your vision in action. Mm -hmm. But what most of us do at the top of the year, we jump straight to strategy. We, we jump straight to goal setting. Instead of embracing purpose, turning it into our vision and figuring out how we align each area of our life with purpose. We go straight to strategy. And then we we wonder why, you know, by uh, what's what's the day? February 1st, we didn't fall off our New Year's resolutions. Or the next year come around and we look at ourselves as if, you know, like, hey, I'm in the same spot I was last year. I'm no, no closer to achieving any goal, right? Because we haven't done the work. You can't skip steps. Just like you can't skip steps with building a business. Or you can't skip steps with figuring out a math problem. You can't skip steps when it comes to operating purpose. You can't. And then all of this stands on a rock solid foundation. In order to hold all this up, you have to have a rock solid foundation. And this is where self-awareness comes in. And most people think they're self-aware but they're not. Statistics shows that 95% of people think that they are self-aware, but only 15% truly are. And I think that one of the reasons is, it's because we're not facing the traumas. We're not accepting the traumas. And we're not getting help with the traumas. And Paige talked about that, you know, earlier. She said that, you know, she just she just wanted to know what was going on. Like, who was her father? You know, I'm not even blaming anybody. I'm not even blaming anybody for, you know, all of the wrong that I've done in my own life. I'm not blaming anybody. I accept what I've done, but I just need to know. I need to face this particular trauma of not knowing who my father is so I can be a better person for my kids. It takes self-awareness to be able to do that, mm -hmm. right? And this is why a lot of our plans are crumbling because we're not built on a solid foundation. Now, the way that Paige's purpose works into or aligns with her, her home environment, right, is because, like, number one, Helping women not to be afraid to speak about mental health, that's going to encourage other women, you know, to get the help that they need to come up out of their home environment. You guys, you have to have peace in your home in order to show up in the world as your authentic self. It starts with, it starts with the home. Paige has already talked about how, and this bleeds over into, you know, relationships as well, but she's already talked about how she doesn't feel enough, right? not enough. She knows that that's a, that's a trigger and it causes her to have, you know, relationships that she don't need to be having, both romantic and platonic, right? And she right. wants so bad for, you know, her, her child to have a mother and a father, you know, in the home, but she realized where that is coming from, right? And it's coming from the fact that, you know, she has a trauma of not growing up with her with her father in her in her life, not even not only not only not having her biological father, but even the father she thought was was her daddy all her life wasn't even in her life. So because she recognizes this, right, she's making sure that the relationships that she gets into are not affecting her home environment. Because the ultimate thing is for her children to know that she loves them. So this is how she's aligning 
purpose with her home environment. Finances, she started a business. She's a business owner. So that's helping her, you know, with her finances. And then also too, guys, the fact that, you know, Paige is in therapy, you know, to help out with her, you know, her, her issues of not having a father, you know, in, in her life, you know, that's also helping with the finances too. Because how many of you guys out there are walking around with this unresolved trauma, but you stacking up credit card debt because you're trying to fill a void? We do that all the time. We do that all the time. It affects your finances. When you finally figure out what actually makes you happy, not as I said, it has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with money. So that's how her purpose is in alignment with her finances. Relationships, we already talked about that a little bit. It's not just the romantic, but it's also the platonic relation, the, her relationships as well too. Paige has already, you know, identified certain people that she don't even need to be around anymore because they can accept her growth. If you're hanging around people who are not able to support you on your self-awareness journey, that's gonna stop you from operating in purpose. And when that happens, you are out of alignment. Mm -hmm. So it's time to let some people go. We've already talked about that. This is how you feel fulfilled. This is how you experience true joy and true happiness. By making sure purpose is in alignment with every area of your life, guys. Do you have any questions about that, Paige? No. Um, well, actually, it, it's a question. Would you say that not only is this about, I mean, it, of course it is about my personal issues, but for other women who experience a lot of issues that they have because of traumatic events, it takes, would you say that it takes self-awareness for them to be able to come to the realization that they need help to walk in their purpose because they might have everything aligned everything not aligned but everything that they need but awareness is big and that's what stood out to me for you because a lot of people be like I'm aware I'm aware but they're really not aware of it because it's a whole it's a whole thing it's a whole big circle that you have to get each point you got to get each points in order for you to actually walk and live in your purpose you gotta you gotta get all those things right and that's absolutely. why i'm here that's why i'm taking your classes because i'm mm -hmm. ready mm -hmm. absolutely that's why the foundation is is when you build your foundation it's all about self-awareness mm -hmm. because you you have to have that that strong foundation and knowing who you are, right? Knowing mm -hmm. how other people see you, being aware of the fact that you have some unresolved traumas that you know that you that you need to get help with, right? So it doesn't affect your mindset, right? So you can change the condition of your heart. Because your heart dictates your mind and and, and your mindset dictates the actions, how you show up in the world. So it's like a it's like a whole little cycle. It's a whole little circle. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it starts with self-awareness. Self-awareness also helps you to, you know, and, and this is something you guys, and I'm pulling from my personal journey as well, right? Because getting to know who Lakeisha is, is, is how I started having a relationship with God. Because there's no way I can know who Lakeisha is without knowing who he is. And having an establishment of a relationship with God really helped me to even get to this, this, this point that I am here today. Having that relationship with God and building everything upon that is how I'm able to, to, to keep everything steady because that's a part of my foundation. Does that make sense? It's a part of the foundation. So yes, they have to be aware. And yes, it does take self-awareness, right? Because the, the truth of the matter is God will allow you to win at the wrong thing, guys. They'll allow you to win at the wrong thing. You can have a million dollars in the bank, but still not be fulfilled. Fulfilled, yes. And I think over and over and over and over again in my years up until I turned 28, mm -hmm. it wasn't until then it's say, okay, Paige, you've done this over and over and over and over and over and over again. You still sit, it's still missing. So you got to figure it out. You got to be aligned with your purpose. You got to live in your truth, your authentic self, like you said literally that's the only way 
That's the only way. And when you accept yourself, flaws and all, right, it takes away the ammunition that people have against you. Mm -hmm. Because people will throw your past up in your face in a heartbeat, calling themselves, shaking you, or putting you mm -hmm. in your place, right? But mm -hmm. when you have accepted whatever that is, right, they can't use that against you. Yep. But I'm thankful. I'm right grateful. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and Paige, you have grown a lot. Paige. Yeah. How yeah, about so Paige, I love you today? I love you too. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. This was awesome. This thank, was you so, thank you thank so you. much. This was awesome. But before we end the conversation, I want to know, what is a book or audible book? Because I'm addicted to audible girl. I love mm -hmm. to listen to my books. But what book or audible book uh, recommendation that you have of a book that you've read that has, you know, inspired you in some way? Um, it would be a book called Never Go Back. Never yeah. Go Back. Okay. Ooh, I'm gonna have, definitely going to have to, I'm definitely going to have to look into that. So last question. When describing the meaning of living your truth, what is your third word when I give these two words together? Okay. Self-awareness, purpose, and truth. Girl, you better say it. You better say it. You better truth. say it. It's truth. I love that. I love that. Secrets hurt you. Ooh. Mm, 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 mm. Secrets hurt, guys. Even the ones that you keep. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Paige. You're amazing. Thank you. You are as well.